does, doesn't it? So higher plateau pressure, stiffer lungs, or another way to say it, decrease in static compliance. What was the second one? I'm sorry. I, I was just going to repeat it. Um, so high plateau pressure, low compliance in the lungs. High pressure, low compliance. Is that what your question was, Camilla? Um, no, the one with the fluid. Mm -hmm. The stiff alveoli will cause decrease. Mm -hmm. True. <coughs> All right, now we have a scenario, and we'll put all of our knowledge to use. A patient on a ventilator is receiving a tidal volume of 800 mLs. So 800 mLs of air is being pushed into the lungs. You are at the ventilator, and notice that at the peak of inspiration, the airway pressure reads 35 centimeters of water. You record this value. You then stop the airflow for a half of a second and notice the pressure reading. You record this value. This pressure is also called the plateau pressure. It reads 28 centimeters of water. At the end of exhalation, you notice that the pressure does not go back to zero. Instead, there is a set positive pressure of six centimeters of water. This is called the P. Calculate dynamic compliance and static compliance using the values from the scenario. All right, I'll put the lights on so we can do it together and then I'll give you a practice one. You need to know what the peak pressure is. Is it for you in this scenario? Um, 35. 35. Calculate the dynamic compliance first. Oh, the tidal volume, 800 mLs. Okay. So to calculate dynamic compliance, um, you put the tidal volume on the top of the equation and divide by the peak pressure minus the um, end excitatory pressure of the peak. And then how do we round that off to the tenth place? 27.6. Yes. And then the units are um, cc's per centimeter of water. Alright, so we just calculated dynamic compliance. 
I didn't give you normal values, did I? Oh, uh, so um, normal value is 30 to 40 cc's per centimeter of water. Thirty to forty cc's per centimeter of water for dynamic complaints. Um. Okay. So they have low compliance. Yes. This patient has low compliance, either due to airway resistance or the stiffness <coughs> of the alveolar. One of the two. Pretty much, just one change. What is it? So the formula is a little bit different for static compliance. Yeah, we want plateau pressure. Is 28 centimeters of water. So it would be that minus the P. Does everybody know where the number 22 came from? Plateau pressure minus the peak. Okay. All right, so a normal static compliance is 40 to 60 cc's per centimeter of water. Do you want to put that on the paper where it talks about static compliance? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, 40 to 60 cc's per centimeter of water. <clears throat> and what was it? 30 to 40. All right, so this person, do they have stiff alveolar? Yes. Yeah, a little bit, right? 40 to 60 is normal and they have 36. They're a little stiff. So they probably have pulmonary edema. Um, if something's going on in their lungs, they can be lung stiff. example. There's more examples in D2L so you can practice. I'll just call out some numbers. Are you ready for this? The tidal volume is 600 cc's. The peak pressure is 25 centimeters of water. 25 for peak pressure. The plateau pressure is 20 centimeters of water. And the peep is 5 centimeters of water. Um, the peak pressure, 25 centimeters of water. The peak pressure, or PIP. And then the P E E P or the end expiratory pressure is five centimeters of water. So what did you say was twenty? The plateau pressure. All right. So with those numbers, you can calculate the dynamic compliance and the static compliance. Um, I'll come around and check your um, equation, see how you're doing, and then. If everything's fine, then you can take time for lunch, and we'll get started about five after one. <clears throat> 